So now we've done the rest of task number two. All we have left is the mortality analysis portion and then to save the whole file and upload it. So I'm not going to do all of this obviously because most of this is where you have to show that you understand the concepts, can interpret things in the context of the situation, know how to fully explain with full sentences, hint, hint, hint. Right? So make sure you can do all of that with detail and context for every question. All right, now how do you do that in your spreadsheet though? You want to put it in a place that your instructor can really find it easily. So I'm going to highlight a bunch of cells here. I'm going to click Merge and Center. I type Part 4 um, Analysis, say, or Mortality Analysis. I can't remember what I called it. Mortality Analysis. And actually, I think I called this, yeah, Mortality Calculations, Mortality Scatter Plot. So, so this is Mortality Calculations. Technically, it's mortality versus life expectancy. So I'm actually going to put that. And then down here, I'm going to copy, paste. I'm going to call this part four, mortality versus life expectancy analysis. Well, I don't like how small that font is, so I'm going to make it 16. I'm going to make it bold. Again, that messed with my row size, so I'm going to actually highlight a couple rows worth here. Click Merge and Center again. That unmerges it. And then click it again, and then I'll remerge it. And then I can go over here to this Congo Dominican Re or Democratic Republic, and I can double click on that row to make it nice. It just bugs me. That's the kind of thing that bugs me. All right, so now I'm going to go down here. And keep in mind, you're trying to keep everything nice and neat for your instructor to follow. I mean, that's kind of your goal here, is that the instructor will have an easy time figuring out what you've done where. Right? So and you can fuss around with your borders and make things look nice. That's up to you. But the nicer and neater you make it, the better it's going to be for you because you're making it so your instructor doesn't have a hard time figuring out your answers and where you solve things. Remember that in order to get credit for these things, they should be able to click on the cells and see the formula up here in the formula bar that you use to do these calculations. Now, that's not true for the analysis portion because we're going to write a lot. So we're going to use insert text box over here. And I'm going to click on the left. I'm going to drag it to the right. And I guess I'm going to go downward. And I'm basically putting in like a sheet of paper so that I can type one, blah, 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 enter, two, blah, blah, blah. And I can make it so that the numbers are bold and I can, right, and I can make this font a little bit bigger if this is hard to read, right? You can mess around with this so that it looks nice, it looks a little bit more like, well, what you would want your instructor to read from you. So that's all well and good, right? And we get to all of those, and that's no problem. And then we get down to one of the questions. And now where this is might change depending on the semester you're doing your assignment in, because I'm going to get rid of a couple questions in here. So, um, But it's going to ask you eventually to do some computations right here. So we want to compute the life expectancy and the residual. right? OK, so to do that, that's for the US. So you're going to have to find the US in your data set, and you're going to have to compute your predicted life expectancy. Now, luckily for you, you've actually done some work for this ahead of time without realizing it. This is where taking the time to do that extra portion in part three above, finding these values, will be very helpful to you. Oop, I accidentally did something. All right, so. Where this falls, of course, depends on the semester you're doing this in. But And don't forget, by the way, if you run out of space, that you can make it so that there's more space in your paper by clicking and dragging the paper, the, the text box, down lower so that you can see more. OK, so there's my text box values. And I would bold all the numbers and unbold all my answers, and so it's nice and neat. OK, so let's do the predicted US life expectancy. And I'm going to do it right up here with my calculations, because I think it's a little bit easier to see if it's next to the slope and the intercept, because those are the values I'm going to use. So let me type here, predicted US value, right here. Well, again, it's messing around with me here. So I'm going to merge this into a couple different cells. As a matter of fact, first thing I'm going to do is move this over. And then I'm going to merge it and click Merge and Center and then double click and make my row nice and good. Right. OK, so this is technically for part four, but that's OK. We can do it up here. You could also do it over here on the side if you wanted. You could do 
um, predicted US value over here. You know, put it wherever you like, that's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, so I'm going to click on this empty cell. I'm going to type equals. Now, remember how this works. You take your slope, but we already know our slope. It's right there. We already calculated it. Times the x value. Well, the x value is my data set value. So I've got to go through my list and find the US in here. Luckily, it's in alphabetical order. So the United States is way down here. Now I want the x value, which in our case, x was infant mortality. That's our explanatory variable. So I'm going to click over here on 25.9, which for me is in cell B, column B, row 139, but it'll be in a different place for you. So click on whatever cell it is for your x value, plus, and then click on the y-intercept value. And there you have it. You've just calculated your prediction for the U.S. value for, oh, excuse me, predicted U.S. life expectancy. Right? That's what you just found. Oops, I'm going to get rid of the word value. It makes it too long. There we have it. Now, what was the actual life expectancy? Well, that depends on the next part. So it'll tell you the actual, actually, you know what it is. The actual life expectancy, remember, if I go back over here, scroll down, the actual life expectancy, I gotta go find the US, there it is, was 69.91. So I click on that cell and press enter. So now I've got it written down. So the prediction was 69.34, the actual was 69.91. The residual, so I'm going to highlight these three cells, merge and center again, so that way I've got some room to type. So residual, well remember residual is actual minus prediction, actual minus prediction. That's the formula for it that we learn in section 4.3. So I'm going to click on this cell over here, I'm going to type equals, and then I want the actual number which I've got right here, or if you didn't bother to put it here, you didn't have to, you could go back to the column and find it. Minus, and then my prediction, which is right there, and press enter, and there's my residual. So I've answered two of the questions, or I've shown the calculations, if you will, for two of the questions. So when I get to those questions down here, wherever they may be, if I want the residual, which I don't know where it is, um, so prediction right there, I have in question 11, it might be question 13, it might be question, you know, it'll change a little bit depending on how the project's written for your semester. But go find that and you can say, okay, well, when I get to question 11, when it asks me what the prediction, right, so the predicted U.S. value is, I can say that number, give it its units, which I haven't put in there, but you would put some units in there, so and you get to say, you know, 69.34, blah, 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 and then say C cell, and then type the cell where it's located for your instructor to be able to find. So if I click on it, you can see it's cell M, row 25, so column M, row 25, there it is. And you can see it because those that row and that column get dark up above. So C cell M25, or wherever you happen to have yours. That's one of the ways that you show your own individuality is where you decide to put it. And then for 12, you want the residual, so you type what it is. You know, in our case, it was 0.5689, blah, 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 right? Because that'll have a unit, and then C cell in my case, it's M27. That was where my residual was right here. All right. So that should help you with the tiny bits of calculations that you need to do in Excel to do this last portion, right? So you make sure that you type all your answers, you have everything in there. Remember that you can drag this paper larger, and you should, because if this paper is too short, what'll happen is that it'll disappear and your instructor won't know that there are answers there unless they click on it and they might not click on it. They might just not see it and not give you credit. So you want to make sure you drag that text box nice and big, right? Just click on the bottom, to move your cursor to the bottom corner or bottom um, center and let it turn into that double-sided arrow and then drag it down. So that makes it a larger and larger piece of paper for you to be writing in. 
once you get to your final results, right, your final answer, you save, of course, and then you close the file. I always like to close it to make sure that I've saved it appropriately because it'll ask me to save if I haven't saved recently. And then we're going to upload it following the instructions in the last video. So go to that last video for how to upload it into my stat lab for your instructor.